We're, we're the, the Scarlet, Scarlet Opera, Opera, and we're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. What's up, guys? Rob here, Front Row Live Entertainment. I'm hanging out with a band that has been blowing up here in LA, and you know, only one single out, and you guys are making a lot of noise. The Scarlet Opera, how's it going, everyone? And uh, congratulations, two sold out shows here at the Troubadour. Um, how do you guys prep for something like this? Like, you you come out of nowhere and like people want to see you. Okay, yeah, I think I think going to the line. Go ahead. We don't. <laughs> yeah. This is all just spontaneous. No, no. no, it's a it's a it's a lot of. I mean, we, we rehearse a lot, <laughs> but the day of shows are a bit chaotic. I know you guys were hanging out a bit before this, and yeah. you know it's you know we got a lot of things to pull together in a couple hours, but we do it. We manage. We manage. Yeah, exactly. And this is such an incredible set. So let's talk a little bit about the set and like, who, what was the idea behind this, this, this stage show that you guys are putting together right now? Well, the last time that we played here, we had that kind of metallic um, background uh, backsplash and we kind of wanted to have a deconstructed theater or the theater of the future, um, which is very much what I think that we're, uh, we provide in terms of theatrics. Uh, and this time I wanted to kind of light it on fire. So that's the idea. That they're supposed to be abstract flames. We'll see what they think, the audience. <laughs> <laughs> now, The Place to Be is such an incredible song. Uh, it's super catchy. I'm having it like in, uh, on my mind like all the time. I don't know all the lyrics yet, but eventually I will, and I will be singing along with you guys. But, you know, talk to me about that creative process, because you guys have Dave Stewart and Romans, like yeah. incredible producers, songwriters that you got to collaborate with this on, on this single. So what was that initial process when you guys first jumped into the studio and started working together? I think it was our first time actually working in a studio as a band with other people there, um, which was different for us because we've been doing this for so long, just the five of us in basements. Um, so to work with someone like David and his songwriters were amazing and it changed our creative process a little bit and, and kind of deconstructed it. Um, but I think we just learned a lot. We learned how to work well as a band and work really in a timely fashion because we did all the songs we did in like three weeks. Wow. Um, and that will be the whole album. So yeah, it was just a, uh, an eye-opening process for how we can function as a band. Right. And we should make a note that Jessica Gumbar was also a par uh, part of writing um, our first single. And I would say that, you know, it's very interesting because, like he said, we started out doing this together in a room, and you really have to trust the people that come into the room. And when we met them, it, it was an immediate connection. And we met a lot of people, and they were all wonderful, but this was, this was different. It definitely sparked um, an electricity in the room. So that's why three weeks flew by, yeah. and we have many, many good songs. <laughs> I can't wait. And you know, you, you guys are creating your own lane. That's what, that's what this music is all about. And so going into the studio, starting to write this material, how did you know that this was your sound? Like, how did you come up with this sound and say like, this is the lane that we're trying to be as the Scarlet Opera? I think a big part of that is we all come from very different musical backgrounds. And instead of going into this, into this process with we want to be the best rock band, we want to be the best funk band, the best pop band. It was, let's just bring the best of our individual talents into one kind of sphere, one, to fo one focus. That was, yeah. yeah. And, you know, talk to me a little bit about that, that collaboration process, because, you know, how did it start for this particular single? Uh, was it lyrics that first started? Was it a melody that you guys had in mind? Was it a piano, you know, ballad that you had in mind? Like, how did that really start the process? I mean, the process is different, I think, every time. Um, I, I would say that uh, for this single specifically, the, the top line, the melodies and the lyrics kind of revealed themselves. But I do think that as we're writing and like I, I start to hear like the first verse coming to fruition, I'm like this, oh, this is that, you know, childhood memory or like this is what I want to say here. And then once you get that, you can run and sprint in a direction. And we did. Um, and so but sometimes it's, you know, it's like one of the boys bringing in a, a guitar line and, and, we, and we run with that for a while. And it's just vowel sounds until we find words, you know. So, yeah. So Different. So were you guys hummers or scatters when you guys were trying to figure out uh, the melody and the pockets for every single either. song? <laughs> <laughs> definitely more scat. Yeah, I think definitely more, definitely more scat. Yeah, for sure. So as far you guys mentioned that there's there's more than there's more music that you got to do in the studio. What was it about this song that you felt was the right introduction, the proper introduction to the band? Well, I think you said this before in the past. It feels like an invitation to what we're trying to provide for the live show, which mm -hmm. is um, I don't know, creating a big tent where everybody's welcome. And 
it just is fun and it's infectious and that's kind of what we want people to see when they come see us live, which I think is really our bread and butter. Um, so it felt, felt like the right introduction song. The, even like the, the lyrical content behind it felt like a good statement for what the Scott Opera is trying to do. What would you guys say was the biggest challenge uh, trying to figure out, you know, when the song was finalized, but also like trying to figure out and nail your sound? I mean, it, I mean, this is going to sound so hokey and lame, but like it reveals itself to you. Yeah. You, you don't, you don't go in being. Well, I mean, I guess you could be like, we're going to write a song that sounds like this, but it's like that's so limiting. And I think like what's nice about our, our our band is and why we called it the Scarlet Opera is because of you know the theatrics of it. We can be as intimate mm -hmm. and personal as we want, and we can be as boisterous and you know heavy as we want. And so we can we we, we wanted it all, and we'll get it. <laughs> Vocals are insane on this entire song. Um, those falsettos are ridiculous, especially towards the end of the track. I'm just like, did he just hit that? Like, <laughs> what just happened right now? Um, talk to me about the vocal ranges. Was this something that you brought onto the table? Was this something that David or Romans kind of like said, like, you know, give it a shot here, try doing this here? I mean, definitely I was pushed. David, David pushed me. <laughs> Sometimes to my my ends, my wits. Um, anyway, but yeah, no, he he definitely pushed me in the studio. But I feel like I've always I've always like um, you know had a, a pretty wide range. <laughs> so the high notes were never the problem. So yeah, yeah. So are we gonna get more low notes uh, eventually from you? Well, we'll see. We'll see what. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So for you, Luca, um, talk to me a little bit about that evolution going from fire to this, to this new single? Oh my gosh, I mean, it was m many years. Many know? years and yeah. very different. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, everybody went through it, it, it very differently and it was difficult for a various amount of reasons. We, uh, you know, we had a hard time really being like, what is gonna happen with us? So after releasing From Fire and we felt like there was this big momentum um, from that song, we kind of went into a hibernation mode, started writing a lot, started meeting a lot of writers, um, really f finessing our sound and, and also like our relationship um, as brothers and family. So um, it was <laughs> sadly and very, I mean, it was a sad thing that happened, but it, we, we made the best of it for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Now, as far as the drums go, when you listen to Luca's, um, when you listen to Luca's vocals, how do you balance the drums at the same time? Live or in the studio? I mean, both. <laughs> Um, I just want to provide like the, a perfect bed for him to just be able to go crazy over. Yeah. So I just approach it kind of like Ringo used to. I just try to do what's best for the song, mm -hmm. not really um, take up too much space, but just carve out enough for myself. Yeah. So just yeah. in the studio, he's gonna go crazy tonight. Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. I'll, just, I'll just get <laughs> naked and like you know. Yeah. That's done. <laughs> so as far as like that experience that you guys are currently having right now. Um, you know, it's one single and there's been so many sold out shows. Just got to play New York as well, which yeah. is another iconic venue. Um, what has that taught you moving forward to new material? Like what has that taught you as far as like new ways of singing, new ways of kind of like taking over the stages, new yeah. ways of writing material? I mean, we certainly, even when we wrote the songs that we have now, we imagined what they would be like. Mm. If, if we want to talk about a direction of when you're in the writing room, we knew that we would, that we love being a live band. Like we love putting on a show. So we wrote in that direction anyway. And now I think it's just, it's electrified us even more. We like, I'm like, all right, well, what else can we do? It's like, how can we talk to people in their homes and then also into Ultimately, in a large, large theater. Yeah, um, yeah I think. So. Yeah. 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 I think we've learned a lot from performing, just like how we interact with each other. Because mm -hmm. even going into this, we, you know, we were a new band and we were, you know, awkward on stage and we didn't know how to, you know, be a unit that really people wanted to see. And since being in the studio and these bigger shows, I think we figured out how to really put in a performance, which has been, I think, the most transcendent thing for us. Yeah. How does this like experience performing made you a better uh, musician at the same time? Really learning, in a way, learning each other's parts. Mm -hmm. And like Justin actually said, carving, like making a perfect bed for the music to shine the best it can instead of any individual part. Yeah. So providing the show that we provide and, and with a lot of Luca's help and helping choreograph and making us understand the spaces that we're in, just, I don't know, just creating the best show possible naturally means that you gotta step it up in terms of your playing. Right. Now, I hate to be that fan, but I need more music. So what are the plans for that? What can we expect or look forward to as far as uh, more material? Are we allowed to, are we allowed to say <laughs> that? Soon. Yeah, uh, think, what's the... I think, 
next year. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Very don't soon. Wait, Let's say very soon. Okay. Yeah. Within the next few months. Okay. Mm. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. What Are you sure? I thought you were. I, th I thought I heard Hi. something. No. <laughs> <laughs> so with these shows that you're performing right now, um, you know, you're also bringing in covers. I'm assuming yeah. that you guys are performing. What is it about these covers that you feel fit perfectly with the type of show and the type of music that you guys are creating, especially Lucky by Britney? Yeah, um, you know, again, like Danny said, I think earlier, we come from such different musical backgrounds and that ranges from, you know, I don't even know, like uh, Britney Spears, that's why we're doing Lucky. I was like, that was like, I was like, you guys were doing it and they were very on board, but. Whose you know. voice was that? <laughs> 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 That's me. <laughs> this is fake voice right now. But yeah, no. Um, and then you know we're gonna do a Tina Turner cover that we love, and um, that's just part of the classics we all enjoy. And then tonight we have a special surprise that we're excited about—a new one. So nice. Nice. Well, I'm super excited for you guys. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me. Thanks for creating the music that you're creating. Uh, it's always, it's always amazing, like getting to like get a fresh new take on new music um i feel like there's been so much of the same coming out but when an artist like yourselves come out with something new fresh that you can't just put it anywhere like box it up it's amazing it's such an incredible feeling so thanks for doing that guys Appreciate thank that. you for hanging out you guys be sure to check out the scarlet opera and uh, thanks for watching here on front row live <laughs>